Hey, this pharmacist Curtis Alexander. In this video, I'm going to go over some natural options that you can use to address restless leg syndrome. So first and foremost, the theory behind restless leg that a lot of doctors, practitioners subscribe to is that restless leg is a dopamine our, our levels of dopamine are too low. If we get those up, it fixes things. I think there's some evidence for that, but I don't totally buy into it. I think there's other things going on. One of which is, the first thing I would look at is your serotonin levels. What are you doing in your life that are, that's increasing serotonin? Because even in Parkinson's, before Parkinson's really develops, we can see higher levels of serotonin. We can see some of those things going on. And I understand that if you look in the news or anywhere else that you're supposed to have more serotonin. But like any other hormone chemical, there's a balancing act to be had there. So I personally believe getting your serotonin levels under control and not having them too high is step one. How do you do that? Um, first of all, are you taking any medications that cause serotonin to go up? We even see this in people who take some of the antidepressants like uh, Prozac in that selective serotonin reuptake inhibitor class that causes serotonin to go up. We can see restless leg type symptoms in those people. So I would talk to your doctor about trying to address that issue, uh, either decreasing or coming off medications with your doctor's consent, obviously, to get the serotonin levels down. The other thing you wanna look at, we see this in people with Crohn's disease, they can develop restless leg syndrome, is any sort of gut inflammation. So we want to address that, keep that low. I'll talk about ways to do that as we go along here. Thyroid, do you have thyroid issues? I have thyroid issues. Um, one of the things you want to do is to make sure that you have a healthy thyroid. Completely whole nother topic. We address it incorrectly a lot of times uh, in the medical community, but that's something that contributes to elevated serotonin levels. Lastly, and we'll get into this a little more in dietary, get rid of seed oils. Seed oils are no bueno, um, not good for serotonin levels. Okay. So now let's talk about dietary. We've hit serotonin, you wanna get your serotonin down. Number two, dietary. First of all, you want to, coming back to the gut inflammation, you wanna be eating foods that are easily digestible. You do not wanna be eating resistant starches. Like if you were to cook a potato, um, let it cool down or even refrigerate it, heat it up again, it's gonna have resistant starch in it tougher to digest. Stay away from those things. Stay away from um, like cruciferous vegetables that are raw. Raw broccoli, it sounds like it's his health food. It's not. It's very tough to digest. So you want to stay towards easily digestible food choices, uh, ripe fruits. Um, you know, if you're going to have muscle meat, have it with some bone broth. Some of these things, I don't want to turn this into a dietary uh, video, but foods that are easily digestible. Stay away from processed foods. You want to stay away from the seed oils. Okay. So dietary. This is an important one. I've personally seen PEMF help people with restless leg. Um, and I think there's a couple of components as to why it's helping. I've made a separate video on what PMF is and how it works in your body. So I'll put a link to that. But basically PMF is a way for your body to get electromagnetic frequencies at a cellular level. And this is very important for a couple of things. One of which is your mitochondrial health. The mitochondria are essentially the engines of your cell. If you, you desperately want healthy mitochondria, PMF can help with that. The other thing it does is it decreases inflammation. And this is important because one of the things um, that we believe may be contributing to restless legs is a compression on your nerves. One of the ways to try to get rid of that is surgery, which we obviously want to try to avoid. Another thing that contribute, can contribute to it that we can address naturally is inflammation uh, coming down on those nerves. So PMF lowers inflammation, may address nerve compression. Uh, it may be a mitochondrial issue 
as far as how I've seen PMF help it. Um, the other thing, and this is very interesting, and it's, it's going to lead me right into number four here, which is kidneys, kidney disease. Interestingly, in people with kidney disease, and I'm not talking stage one, but we're talking stage three, four, dialysis, and stage uh, kidney disease, 20 to 57 percent of those people end up with restless leg or restless leg syndromes. So why is that? Don't really know for sure. Again, kind of going back to there's all sorts of theories, but the one thing I've seen PMF help with substantially is with kidney function. So this is kind of a two-in-one. PMF can help with kidney function. There's something going on in people when they simply become unhealthy. Maybe it's a waste product they can't get rid of. Um, we have a number of components. So waste products, inflammation, the nerve compression. Could be a lot of these factors contributing, but I believe it starts at a diet level. I believe PMF can help substantially. It's worth a shot. Um, if you want to learn more about PMF, just go to curtis-alexander.com. I have a, basically a free 30 days to better health report. Just sign up for it. It's free. I go over some of those things. I go over PMF. I go over stem cells. I go over dietary cover a lot of these things in bite-sized chunks, so check that out. But again, this is how I would tackle restless legs from a natural standpoint. Really quick note on prescription meds. I made a video about Ropinrol, which is a medication we use for restless legs. It can help. Its idea is to increase dopamine, but some of the issues we see is the restless leg medications can actually augment the restless leg symptoms, meaning you'll see restless leg syndrome when you take the medications. It's called augmentation and it can occur earlier in the day than it normally does. You can also see rebound and you can also see compulsive behavior, gambling for example. So they are not without their problems. Okay, So that's kind of why I lean a little more towards hit the natural stuff first then we can talk about prescription medications. So. With that being said, I know I covered a lot of ground in the video. Cover, get your serotonin lower, cover your dietary, consider looking into PMF, and those would be the, the big things. So any questions, post them in the comments. Any other videos you want me to cover, post them in the comments. I look at them all. I may not be able to respond to each one, but it helps me know what's helpful, what you want to see. Speaking of which, I hope this video was helpful. and. Until the next one, I will see you. Thanks.